Commissioner of Prisons and a Deputy Commandant of the Prisons Academy and Training School. This is our maiden course, maybe to make some little correction. It's the maiden intermediate command and staff course. We have been having other courses, but this is the first of its kind. A course of middle level officers, senior officers, which is uh, intended to give them according to our aim, the course aim actually, to equip the participants who are the prisons officers, middle level senior managers, with advanced intellectual and practical approaches to correctional services with a view of augmenting the efficiency and effectiveness of the service. It is actually a very, very practical course which gives them the practical way to deal with the modern management, modern management practices, modern practical ways of dealing with issues that are contemporary as they manage the prisons across the country. As you are aware, the world is advancing. And as they advance, as it advances, the, 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 the crimes also advance. So right now we have uh, different kinds of criminals we keep and so on. So we cannot remain the way we were. So we want to thank the top administration of Uganda Prison Service, led by the Commissioner General of Prisons, supported by the Prisons Authority and the other top managers to have thought about this course. For us as training school, we are the implementers, but they are the brain this course. And it is the maiden course, this is the maiden pass out, as you have been told, and we are very glad that it has come to today. Just a bit of uh, uh, the description, I want to read verbative. Uh, the course in diversity and at times in a diverse environment. It has been delivered by different methodologies, face-to-face -face lectures by um, the lecturers from ourselves, Uganda Prison Service, from the sister institutions, UPDF and the Uganda Police, and then from the higher institutions of learning, Makere University, as you have been told, and then Uganda Management Institute. The participants have also been taken through tours and the other educational programs which will definitely be probably talked about by other speakers. I want to thank you, dear guests, for coming. As a matter of convenience, if we want to have to relieve ourselves, there is this place on the left at the block you're seeing the gentlemen can feel free to use that place. Then on the right, the people seated in the tent on my left will use that place. Then there is another place behind the small tent. The ladies should use that place. Thank you very much. Meanwhile, band, you can give us one.
part of our cultural troop and he's demonstrating to the commandant Kabadie, uh, hopefully the commandant you're not intending to take our officer. That's Assistant Commissioner of Police, Ezekiel Emetu. Emetu, you're most welcome, Commandant Kabadie. And uh, you're most welcome also, uh, we will come Colonel Justus Rukundo from Oliver Tambo, the commandant. Thank you for the comradeship spirit and traveling all those journeys and deciding to join us. We understand how you take importantly the sister agents, cooperation and friendship, and we are honored to have you. Uh, also in our midst is one of our own who has moved with us through the training programs of UPS, and that is Senior Commissioner of Police, Dr. John Kamia. You're most welcome, sir. Uh, the prison's top management is here, and I wish to welcome our Director of Administration, ACGP, John Bosco Tumwebaze. You're most welcome, sir. I don't know whether people still call you headmaster here, <laughs> but you're most welcome, former headmaster. ACGP in charge of collection of services, a fund Milton Tio, you're most welcome, sir. and the Deputy Director, Senior Commissioner of Prisons in charge of Projects Development, Senior Commissioner of Prisons, Jude Kalisa, you're most welcome, sir. I wish also to recognize the presence of Senior Commissioner of Prisons, Wilson Francis Magomu, you're most welcome, sir. I wish also to recognize the presence of Senior Commissioner of Prisons, Julius Aloka. You're most welcome, sir. Deputy Director in charge 
of cooperation and corporate affairs. Our undersecretary in charge of finance and administration, you're most welcome, sir. Thank you for enabling us to organize this function also. Uh, I wish to continue by recognizing people around. We have a representative of the vice, cha of the vice chancellor of Makere University, Professor Eric Awich, who is the deputy principal of the College of Humanities and Social Sciences. You're most welcome, Prof. You, you see now, when the function begins to have professors in the, in the audience, and who are the stakeholders who have been the teachers, you know the rating now. Also, he moved with Professor Helen Nkarata Nkabara. You're most welcome, Professor. You can hear the response from the participants. She has dedicated her time here. Thank you, Prof, for your time. I wish also to recognize the presence of the Director General of Uganda Management Institute. You, you, you have not clapped before he stands. Eh? Participants, even you. The Director General of Uganda Management Institute has been represented by Dr. Sylvester Kugonza, the Dean School of Civil Service, Public Administration and Governance. You're most welcome, Doctor. I am sure in the audience here you have the largest number of postgraduate students. You were there? Yes. Jacob Ochivumbe has said he was there. You're most welcome, and we are happy to have you uh, at this function, and we shall continue recognizing all the invited guests. Of course, the team from Uganda Management Institute has come with other officers who are the foot soldiers, uh, especially with the engagement in communication, as well as Makere University. At an opportune time, they will also be handing over, they will also handing over certificates to our participants because they had a significant hand as far as the delivery of this course is concerned. Today indeed is a very special day. I want to give you assurances that we are about to officially start because our guest of honor, I am reliably informed that he is arriving. Once he arrives, he will proceed to the command post of the terrain model, and then the rest of us, save for top management, uh, some of the top management as they might decide, the rest of us will remain here, except that we shall raise up and we will come the guest of honor. I want to sincerely welcome you, and, uh, and we feel so delighted over this occasion taking place. Thank you so much. Bless. Blast is out. Just band, all the cultural troop, jazz. Yes. Thank you. Put 
to Maputo, home of the brave, our nation will soon be as well. Freely more, freely more, your rent and no flame has shown us the light. Oh, no. No, no, no. 
Lumuna, Sikutala, 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 Baba, Wana, Baba, Balumuna, Sikutala, 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 Baba, Wana, Baba, Balumuna, Sikutala, 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 Baba, Wana, Baba, Balumuna, Sikutala, Sikutala, has proceeded to the command post to inspect a model that the participants developed and it's uh, going to take a short period. Then thereafter, he will be joining us here for the official function as arranged in our program book. Uh, we shall keep recognizing the officers around because we can see that the management of Uganda Prison Service is a full on full board here and I think it's important that we know who is here who is with us. I had just finished recognizing the senior officers in the guest of honor's tent, save for senior commissioner of prisons, 
Franka Mayanja Baine you're most welcome sir uh, today we are receiving you also as a guest uh, Franka is the deputy director in charge of cooperation and corporate affairs uh, I wish also to recognize the commissioners present Commissioner of of the pending operation Makini Bora for producing prisoners charge of terrorism to High Court Kampala. I have a team of officers, sir, who are going to execute this operation, sir. Please, let's come, sir. Let's come, sir. Please, go at the corner, the other side. With me, sir, is ASP Otema, sir, the regional engineer. Principal Officer 1, Joseph, sir. He is the operations commander, ASP Simon Peter Ingavas. He is the regional intelligence officer. Principal Officer 1, the CJ, he is the logistics officer. Principal Officer 1, Titine Carol, he is the communications officer. Superintendent of Prisons, Sam Konge, officer in charge, upper prison. Sas Baker, officer in charge, sir. Chigo Main Prison. Principal Officer 1, Abio, Officer in Charge, Maxon Bay. So we have a scope that we are going to follow as we present to you the operation, sir. We have a way to talk about the historical background, the production terrain, the mission of the operation, sir, the terrain analysis, threat analysis, execution of the operation, sir, administration and logistics. Communication and signal command and control. Our general idea, sir, is that Uganda is a sovereign state with an elected leader, and Kampala is the capital city with five divisions, sir. These five divisions provide a safe ground for rural urban immigrants who travel to Kampala with the aim of getting employment, sir. These people, when they don't get employed, End up a whole director. He's seated with Commissioner of Prisons El Tumurata in charge of logistics management. We also welcome uh, Commissioner of Prisons in charge of Staff Administration, Steve Lugonda. You're most welcome, sir. Commissioner of Prisons in charge of Safety and Security Operations, Simon Wansada. You're most welcome. We have a very strong force of Assistant Commissioners in Civilian, Assistant Commissioner in Charge of Health Services, James Sambu, you're most welcome, sir. You're most welcome, Doctor. We also have Assistant Commissioner in Charge of Human Resource, Charles Ziraba, you're most welcome. We also have Assistant Commissioner in Charge of Procurement, Ojambo Ronald, you're most welcome. We also have senior accountant and who was our treasurer for this committee, Mr. Kibom Yusuf. The colleagues, also the assistant commissioners, you're most welcome. We have assistant commissioner, Jole Bamutura. Jole, you're most welcome. Assistant Commissioner of Prisons, Peace Babidie, in charge of ICT, you're most welcome. Assistant Commissioner Juliet Semogere, Kota Master General, you're most welcome. Assistant Commissioner in charge of Planning, Onan Kusasla, you're most welcome. Assistant Commissioner of Prisons, Sarah Narwanga, you're most welcome. Assistant Commissioner of Prisons, Christopher Okwari, you're most welcome. 
Yes. Engineer Tuberondwa, Assistant Commissioner, Engineering, you're most welcome. And the host, the regional commander, Kampala Extra Region, thank you for reminding me. You're most welcome, Commissioner Stera Nabunya. You're most welcome, we shall be waiting for our chief guest to come, and once he arrives, we shall all raise up and sing the national anthem. Our religious leader, thank you for honoring this uh, occasion, and uh, we shall receive a prayer from one of the religious leaders, and then the program will roll on. Um, we have also, yes, uh, thank you, Mary. Uh, you know my eyes are not good. That's why I have an enhancement of the lenses to support me see. So if I miss really to see you, to recognize you kindly, know that it's due to my own shortcomings. Engineer Mukasa Edward, in Com Assistant Commissioner Engineering. You're most welcome, engineer. We have also the officers in charge of the prison units on this hill and beyond this hill, Kampala Extra Region. We have the officer in charge of upper prison, senior superintendent of prisons, Brian Bazira. You're most welcome. We have senior superintendent of prisons in charge of Chigo Main Prison, Robert Naimuri Tagora. You're most welcome. We have also superintendent of prisons, Ernest Nabasa, in charge of Maxion Bay. Rather, can I remind? Sorry, uh, Nabasa was formerly deputy uh, Maxion Bay. The, now the officer in charge of Maxion Bay, you have to stand up and say so that Navasa doesn't stay at the station. Superintendent of Prisons, Habat Kaheru, the officer in charge uh, Maxion Bay Prison. We also have the salaries, our salary. I am in trouble. <laughs> Sir, the assistant commissioner in charge of salaries, Kayong, you're most welcome, sir. Don't undertake a salary reduction. I didn't intend to do it. <laughs> and he's uh, in charge. Luzira Women Cotton is not here, I guess, with us. She's part of the directing staff the acting officer in charge, uh, Solome Atostera. She, she is part of the directing staff and, I, I, and she is not with us here. But we have the officer in charge, Ruzira Chigo Women Prison, Juliet Najuma, superintendent. You're most welcome. Any officer in charge not introduced? Because we are at some point told that officers in charge are next to another office. So, I don't want to leave any officer in charge. Thank you so much for coming, and uh, thank you, uh, the officers from prison headquarters and uh, the officers in charge. We have also our religious leaders who are here with us. Thank you so much. We have um, a representative from St. John's Church, kindly stand up for recognition. Thank you so much for coming, Reverend. You also have a representative from St. Bruno, who is the chaplain of Prison Catholic Church. You're most welcome. And our own Sheikh. I don't know whether there is anyone here who doesn't know you, Sheikh. You must be one of the oldest here. You're most welcome. Uh, I also supervise a band.
But my boss is Frank, <laughs> senior commissioner. Where are the other participants? Some of the participants are the ones presenting uh, the model that they have prepared for the chief guest. And so once the guest of honor returns, we shall also have the attend fully occupied. And thank you also the participants who are here, because what would we be seeing if you had all gone? Thank you for keeping the appearance of the course. And you're very smart. You're extremely smart. I wish I had done this course already. Or maybe uh, found the command and found a way of integrating me. That is the end. Uh, but I know that the way you started is just the same number that has completed the course. And therefore, there is no shortcuts. shortcut. You either do it or do it. Thank you. And uh, we hope the guest of honor will decide to pass you out because he can decide. Eh? Once a trainee, you, even at a function, anything can change. But we uh, hope for the best. Congratulations. Jazz band. of the presentation taking place there when you pray uh, it will distract uh, uh, hearing so I think we we can stay and we allow the presentation to successfully uh, go on okay okay the DJ you can play just something very mild something very mild okay Thank you. 
We now proceed to sing the anthems. But Lead us in a prayer. You're most welcome. God our Father, we thank you very much for this day. As we celebrate the pass out statement of the intermediate command, we thank you, Lord, for our country, Uganda, and for the love you have for our country, Uganda. We thank you very much for the guest of honor. We thank you very much for CGP. We thank you for all the staff of the Uganda Prison Service and all their duties serving their country, Uganda. We thank you for sister and brothers who are here gathered to witness the pass out. We thank you for our brothers and sisters who are going to pass out today. As Jesus called his apostles and sent them, they were called here in March. They have undergoing the training which they are completing today with pass out. We pray for them. Now they are going to do their work. Our eyes are on them. Since they are the pioneers, we expect a lot from them. God our Father, we ask you to bless them. Let them do your service as they serve their mother country, Uganda, and we, the citizens of Uganda. Bless us as we are here. Let us have a good day. Let us celebrate as we witness the pass out. We ask all these through Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the end of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. We can take our seats. Thank you so much, Reverend Joseph. Guest of honor, sir, we take the opportunity to welcome you and we feel very delighted to have you here, sir. 
So at the function, we have a representation from the Uganda People's Defense Forces, Uganda Police Force. We have the academia, the representatives of the, the representative of the Director General of Uganda Management Institute, and also the representation from Makere University. Guest of honor, sir, allow me at this moment to request the chief instructor to present to you the participants. Chief instructor. The chief instructor is senior superintendent of prisons, Benny Nyanzi Ahimbisiwe. You're welcome, Ben. The, the chief guest, Major General Retired Kahindo Tafire, the Honorable Minister of Internal Affairs, the Commissioner General of Prisons, Canon Dr. Johnson Javasheja, the top management of Uganda Prison Service, the senior officers of UPDF present, the senior officers of Uganda Police Force present, senior officers of Uganda Prison Service present, our partners from Makerere University and Uganda Management Institute, all invited guests in your respective capacities, the media, course participants, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. My name is Senior Superintendent of Prisons, Nikomed Ben Nyans Ahimsiwe, the Chief Instructor of the by gender, they are 15 males and 5 females, and these officers are Number 1, Senior Superintendent of Prisons, Innocent Dravire. Number 2, Senior Superintendent of Prisons, Joseph Mpaji. Number 3, Superintendent of Prisons, Richard Magongo Mukonge. Number four, Senior Assistant Superintendent of Prison, Becca Ferdinand. Number five, Assistant Superintendent of Prisons, Solomon Otema. Number six, Assistant Superintendent of Prisons, Peter Simon Ingabat. Number seven, Assistant Superintendent of Prisons, Paul Emmanuel Oporot. Number eight, Principal Officer 1, Annette Shanik Ibokuna. Number 9, Principal Officer 1, Lillian Acero. Number 10, Principal Officer 1, Raymond Obara. Number 11, Principal Officer 1, Peter Nyangabiachi. Number 12, Principal Officer 1, Stephen Onanyang Oruka. Number 13, Principal Officer 1, Joseph Nwamanya. Number 14, Principal Officer 1, Christopher Vesje. Number 15, Principal Officer 1, Barbara Mbeiza. Number 16, Principal Officer 1, Christopher Twebaze. Number 17, Principal Officer 1, Amos Tumhimbise. Number 18, Principal Officer 1, Gina Lubanga Abio. Number 19, Principal Officer 1, Alibat Ayesigamukama. And lastly, number 20, Principal Officer 1, Caroline Titin. Sir, they are ready for pass out. Thank you so much, sir.
Thank you so much, Chief Instructor, for presenting the participants. I now take the opportunity to invite the Commandant Prisons Academy to come and give her remarks, and thereafter she will invite the Commissioner General of Prisons. Your most welcome, Commandant, Commissioner of Prisons, Brenda Sana. Commissioner of Prisons, Brenda Sana, is the commandant of this academy, and she's going to give her remarks. And thereafter, once she's done, she will invite the Commissioner General of Prisons. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Master of Ceremonies. Our chief guest this afternoon the Honorable Minister of Internal Affairs, the Commissioner General of Prisons, members of top management from prison headquarters, senior officers from prison headquarters, senior officers from our sister forces, that is the UPDF and Uganda People's and Uganda Police Force, our partners who have been with us through this journey, those are the representatives from Makerere University and UMI, the religious leaders, the press, all the invited guests, ladies and I'm honored to welcome all of you to this pass out ceremony of the very first intake of the prison's intermediate command and staff course. Chief guest, my chief instructor has already broken down the different ranks of the 20 officers who are passing out today. They reported on the 1st of March, 2023. So today makes it exactly 18 weeks. That is four months and a half of training. They were taken through the, the following modules. One, service writing and staff duties. Two, prisons duties and procedures. Three, political education and ideology. Four, legislation. Five, human rights. Number six, which was done by Uganda Management Institute, was institutional management and leadership. Seven, they did administrative law. Number eight, which was handled by Makere University, they each got a certificate in peace building and conflict transformation. They also did general and contemporary issues. Ten, they learned map use. They were also taken through prisons intelligence. They studied command and operations, which we have just demonstrated a few minutes ago, chief guest. And lastly, they had study tours to the different areas of interest. Looking at it, that we are looking at Vision 2040 of Uganda. The participants needed to know where is Uganda going, what direction. So we had study visits to familiarize themselves with some of those places. Our chief guests, the participants have been a disciplined lot and they have been very focused. They took their training very seriously and displayed qualities of capable leaders. I believe they are ready to put into practice everything that they learned in these last four months. I am positive that they will make even better leaders because the selection was specific. But after this course, they will make even better leaders than they have been who can be more strategic and deliberate in their actions. I would like to thank my team of directing staff, headed by the chief instructor, for all their tireless efforts. Chief guest, most of these directing staff have other duties. They are officers in charge of different prisons, but they always made time to come here, teach their module, and then go back to their mother stations. I would really like to thank them for their... I applaud you, the directing staff. If you could please stand up for the chief guest to see you. Just stand up for recognition. 
So those are the directing staff that have delivered this course. They have been very dedicated. You can please sit. I also extend further appreciation to our partners, in particular Macquarie University and UMI, who took the graduates through different programs. And they will also get certificates today for those programs they took them through. I would also give special recognition to the different government agencies that sent personnel to teach different modules, particularly those that sent staff to give lectures of opportunity. We don't take it for granted and we are very much appreciative. To the graduates, congratulations upon reaching this, this stage in your career. It was just yesterday when we were opening and today you're finishing. As you go out, put into practice what you've learned, work smarter than you have already been doing, and you will be seen by your fruits if you actually took it seriously, but I know you all did. So congratulations, go out and shine, become better officers. I also thank the strategic leadership of UPS, headed by the Commissioner General of Prisons, for working tirelessly to see to it that this course reached where it has reached. We worked along with other sister forces, particularly AIGP Guloba, thank you very much for all the efforts. I can say you, you've been with us from the start. The brain behind this, we worked through all this, plus all that have helped us. Thank you, CGP, for bringing this into fruition. We can see it today here plus all that top management. Chief Guest, I conclude by sincerely thanking you for honoring this invitation to come and pass out our first intake of intermediate command and staff course. As the commandant and my team, we pledge to conduct as many more trainings of this nature and others as we shall be assigned. We are ready for the task. Under the, the guidance of my director, Human Resource, and the overall leadership of the Commissioner General of Prisons. I thank you all for coming and honoring this occasion for God and my country. I would like to take this opportunity to invite the Commissioner General of Prisons to address us. Chief Guest, the Honorable Minister of Internal Affairs, the members of the Prison Authority, the Resident City Commissioner, the religious leaders present, all senior officers of the armed forces, graduates, invited guests in your various capacities, the media, the prisoners band, ladies and gentlemen, Honorable Minister, we are happy to have you here to preside over our first Intermediate Command and Staff Course at the prisons, at this prisoners academy and training school. Thank you, sir, for coming. Allow me also to appreciate 
all the guests who have come to witness this milestone. I, I have seen the director of human resources of the Uganda Police Force, uh, IGP Godfrey Goroba. I seen I have seen uh, Moses Cafero, is he here? I have seen uh, our friend, very resourceful, the commandant of Oliver Tambo, School of Junior Political Ideology. Are those the correct descriptions? I have seen SCP Ezekiel Emitu, the commandant of the police training school, Kavadie. Of course, I know those whom I have not mentioned from the UMI, which has been hitherto. And you still are our main trainer in management of senior prisoners officers. And Makere University, which is now taking a very big role in these professional courses that are beginning to happen in the prisoners academy and training school. Before this, You were a cadet here. You do some few clinics, prisoners management course for four days at Fairway Hotel. And then you are Commissioner General. I didn't do any professional course. So I'm a cadet putting on peeps of the Commissioner General. That is our history anyway. I'm very grateful to the Almighty that prisoners have started this prof professionalization. And uh, I want to thank Uganda police. Honorable Minister, before these 20, we have had 18 do intermediate course at the police college over the last three years. And we have had, I think, also eight do the, the higher version, the senior command at the police college. And I want to thank the police for that. <clears throat> you are the ones who have given us capacity to arrive at this milestone. And of course, I want to thank UPDF for not only ideology, but also specialized training. Honorable Minister, when these graduates were making a demonstration, they were talking of SSU unit. SSU is a safety and security unit of the prison service. But that is trained specifically to offer guard services, high-level guard services. Thank you, UPDF. And I also want to thank AIGP Brigadier General Godfrey Gorova for adapting the curriculum of the military. This thing has its origins in the military. But he adopted it to our prison situation. Prison is like police, like military. We do operations. We do actually. I don't know whether we are not doing more operations than you. 
because in a prison, every day you will release prisoners to court. Every day you will release prisoners to the shamba. Every day you will release prisoners to the building sites. Honorable Minister, as you had guided, we have already formed the prisons engineering gang. And it has already embarked on building those low cost prisons so that we can stem these congestion levels which are we have an occupancy of around 370 something all these are operations that will require planning that will require you to put into consideration the resources you have so that you avoid the the silly mistakes Some of you are officers in charge. Some of you are deputies. Some of you are even inspectors. You should now be able to do your work effectively. Uh, Duravira, I heard that he, you were the operational command of what you are demonstrating. No more silly mistakes from Barara. I want to thank the directing staff uh, who are actually officers in charge. The chief instructor didn't describe himself adequately. Nyanzi, I want to introduce you to the Honorable Minister. Nyanzi is the officer in charge pensions in the prison, in the prison service. But at the same time, the chief instructor here because he's one of the pioneers of the intermediate command and staff course in Buevaja at the police college. And I saw the officer in charge of Aswa Farms, Mr. Chwanuka. He's also an instructor here. But officer in charge of Aswa Farms, of that giant 30,000 acre farm which we are opening. Honorable Minister, we have gone, I think, about 2,000 acres, almost. I have also seen the officer in charge of Ragem prisons, Mr. Peter Nwagawa. That one is also a graduate of Bwebaja. I have seen the officer in charge of Ruzira Women Prison, Ato Stella. Is also a graduate of Guevaja. Whom have I forgotten? The directing staff. You can introduce yourself. Yeah, that is Hassan Warangrira, the officer in charge of Moroto prisons. Is also a graduate of Guevaja. Is also a directing staff here. Who else did I not introduce? The directing staff. Papas Murzi is a staff of parts. I wanted only to introduce those who are coming from far because you are you are a homeboy. Honorable Minister, I will not go into a lot of uh, Rwanju, but permit me to state that currently we have 76,000 inmates, against a total of 14,462 staff including the trainees who will be due for passing out soon. Uh, that is about 200 cadet assistant superintendents on training. They are completing their training and also 318 in-service cadet principal officers. Uh, I, I, and then 1,800 and 99 recruits. This will be the biggest pass out.
God willing, next month of about 2,417 uh, trainees. This will, of course, boost our strength, but it will still leave us short. I am heartened by the fact that we were promised that once the audit, once the salary audit is complete, we are likely to resume training and we still need personnel to contain this 18, this eight percent growth of the prisoner population. The graduates have demonstrated their capabilities of conveying prisoners to court, putting into consideration all challenges, all risks, all factors, but with more personnel, we should be more able uh, to deal uh, with those challenges. Honorable Minister, I want to thank you for the recent promotions of senior prison officers and junior prison officers. I want to thank you for your personal effort in this exercise where we had 145 senior prison officers promoted and 4,239 junior officers promoted. I think you can make the club better. But like Oliver Twist, we shall be expecting more, Honorable Minister. And I want to take this opportunity to request you to pass our gratitude to His Excellency the President for that unquestioned sanction and certification of the, of the promotions which you forwarded to him from the prison authority. Uh, finally, to the to the graduates, I congratulate you upon completion of this training, which you have been undertaking in the last four months. I urge you at all times to apply the knowledge and skills that have been acquired within the duration of this course. I have heard the course content from the commandant. I think it is very good content. Now the board is in your court. You are now the ambassadors. You are expected to improve performance in your respective fields. Stick to the core values of UPS for your professional development as career prison officers. And probably to emphasize, Honorable Minister, this course now offers a clear way of somebody to come from the lowest rank of a warder or a wardress with the best education of senior four. You, can, you now have a clear path to go to the senior ranks. Professionally, you see, Omanene uh, those peeps here, when you don't have anything backing you, you are a wardress, but you are putting on a, a peep of uh, a PO. You are a wardress, you are putting on peeps of an ASP. You have not, you are not yet professionally. Trained, but now with the NCO course, junior and senior, with the junior command course, 
and this intermediate you can now go to the superintendent of prisons and once we reach the senior command level which is still offered by the police because we have not yet developed that capacity you can even go to SSP on a good note Honorable Minister, I was promised by the Chief of Defense Forces that the, the prisoners' officers can also now apply to go and do the National Defense College, the NDC. In other words, once you have done NCO course, Junior Command, Intermediate, senior command you can go to NDC from a order that's what we call professional development we have been cheating non-graduates because the graduates have got the opportunity to go to the Uganda Management Institute and do that much converted postgraduate diploma in public administration and management which, which has been our core course in prisons. We have been, but that is only for graduates. So the poor girl who has risen through the ranks, the poor boy who has risen through the ranks without a degree, he wouldn't smell. He wouldn't smell. You would be looking at an assistant commission as somebody from heaven. But now you have the opportunity with this professionalization to go there. Honorable Minister, I thank you once again for coming to pass out these graduates, for giving us your time. And now, I want to take this singular honor to invite the Honorable Minister of Internal Affairs to give your remarks and thereafter pass out the graduates if you so please. Thank you once again. Thank you, Honorable Minister, for God and my country. Come on. Sit down. The Commissioner of Prisons, Dr. Jonathan Yawashija. Members of the Uganda Prisons Authority who are here, AIGP Brigadier General Gorova, Deputy AI uh, Assistant Com uh, that Commissioner General Prisons, Senior Prison Officers, Senior Police Officers, Senior Army Officers here, graduates and other prison officers, religious leaders, and every invited guest. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me pleasure to participate, to attend and participate in this, on this happy and momentous occasion we are being informed that this is the first intermediate officers training command course. 
What I've seen in the demonstration room has reminded me of what I did, I think about 30, so many years ago. There are things I couldn't remember, but now as the instructor was going on, I started coming back to officer training. Why am I saying this? This reminds me that the police and prison service, the police force and the prison service are part of the national reserve force. Uh, part of the national reserve force. The national reserve force is part of the Uganda People's Defense Force. The People's Defense Force is not only the army, it is everybody else who's been given capacity to defend the country. That's why it's called the National Defense Force. And that's why, like Dr. Jonathan Yawashaja was saying, Chaja was saying, you have to go to the National Defense College. You don't go to the UPDF, no. You go to the National Defense College. Because you, as the prison service, you, as the police force, are part and parcel of the National Defense Strategy. And I'm glad you are beginning to get assets, uh, intellectual assets, for you to fit into this defense course, I mean defense strategy. What you are saying is what ought to be done by every operations officer every morning when you get up. Because why? Because the army battles national ad uh, adversaries. You, prison staff, when you're taking suspects to court, you are doing a defense service. And those very enemies the army is fighting against could also fight you. So you could not say this is for the army and this is not for us because a bullet that is shot at the uh, a UPDF soldier when directed at you, the bullet will not say, no, this one is a wrong, wrong, wrong target, wrong target, no. <laughs> it will definitely not say, this is a wrong target, no. It will hit you and send you to your creator. <laughs> that is if the creator is willing to receive you. <laughs> In as much as it uh, brings down those uh, participating in operational Shuja. So all of you and all of us who are involved in the national security effort ought to have the intellectual capacity to, out, to match or outshine our adversaries. So I'm very glad for this cooperative endeavor between the Uganda Prison Service, the Uganda Police Force, and the UPDF. This means we've gone beyond this hitherto philosophy of parochial approach. Parochial approach. For us, we are the UPDF. For us, we are the Uganda Police Force. For us, we are the Prison Service. Ah, ah, that is for the army. Ah, uh -uh, that is for the police. No. A criminal who cuts you with a, a panga, a criminal who shoots you, a criminal who puts a, explosive devices under bridges are all criminals. They are all criminals and they should be handled concomitantly by the whole Uganda security service. All the services, intelligence, active, prison, police, all of these are criminals and they are dangerous to society. So they should be dealt with holistically, holistically by all the armed 
forces. I'm trying to, to see how to harmonize this because there is this discord between the army and then the prison service and then the police force and the public service. My friend, when somebody is armed, they are armed. When they are armed and the disciplined force, they are armed. Save that the category of assets, uh, you know, change, you know, defers, but a rifle is a rifle. Yeah? A rifle is a rifle. A rifle is called what? A gun. A cannon is called what? A gun. It's a gun. But poor rocket launcher, <laughs> ballistic missiles are all guns. Because they do one thing. They all cause one effect. They manufacture dead bodies. They manufacture dead bodies and that should be synchronized in the defense of our country. Yeah. When a prison officer misuses his rifle, the effect is similar to when a, a soldier, a UPDF soldier, misuses his or her rifle. So we should rethink, the country should rethink its defense strategy, the defense and security strategy of detaching the armed forces from civil service. That's what I'm aiming at. We should detach the armed forces because armed forces are armed forces. Yeah. Agricultural officers don't carry guns. Yeah. Agricultural officers, education officers don't do parade. <laughs> Except when they go to Chengwanzi and they do a bit of jumping up and down and, and they learn how to shoot. <laughs> Agriculture officers don't carry guns. Agriculture <laughs> veterinary officers misuse penicillin, they don't misuse bullets. So the way we handle armed forces should be distinct from the way we handle ordinary civil servants, teachers, doctors, lawyers, those are a category of their own. They are, we refer to them as civilians. A prison officer is not a civilian, my friend. A prison officer has been taught to aim and shoot and shoot properly. <laughs> shoot and shoot effectively. A prison officer carries a rifle, carries a, a, a lethal weapon. Of course, if a doctor misuses the insulin, it's lethal. But a prison officer discharges the firearm. So I'm, I'm, I'm of the view that we should change this concept that prison officers are civil servants, police officers are civil servants, and soldiers are armed forces. No, it's different. So you mean prison officers should go home at five? They should just shut the prisons and see civil servants go home at, at five. So prison officers and police officers should retire from work at five o'clock. Eh. I've not seen veteran officers doing overtime. When it, it's time to close the CDOs, parish chiefs go home. They go home, but prison officers remain on duty. The CGP and his deputy and senior police, prison officers are on, on, at work 24-7, 24-7. So that's why, as a country, we should rethink our security strategy. The other day, uh, when a commissioner general I was talking to the director, citizenship control and immigration, and I was telling them you are misplaced. Uh, immigration is our first line of defense. Immigration is our first line of defense. So since immigration is a defense service, the immigration officers should have knowledge about defense and defense tactics. So you cannot treat them like, like uh, teachers, there is a difference between an immigration officer and a kindergarten teacher. 
kindergarten is there singing twinkle twinkle little i don't know <laughs> And, and making sure that these fellows don't have to <laughs> But an immigration officer is an intelligence officer. An immigration officer is an intelligence officer. So I think we should, we are going to rethink our defense and security strategy and ensure that we have an umbrella, you know, that will encompass those of you who are engaged in the security and defense of our country. Because you are, you are all concerned about one, one ob uh, objective, defeating the criminals. Yeah. Whether the criminals are ADF, whether the criminals are cutting people in massacre, yeah. because when the police have, has arrested them, who, who keeps them? Where do they deposit them? Do they just uh, put them in a brewery? They bring them to prison. They don't send the, the brewery is near here. <laughs> that's not where they put them, they put them here. <laughs> Lodge them with, that's why there is maximum, I don't know minimum, I, I don't have a prison, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I've not heard of maximum elsewhere. It's only, it was what they say, well, jailed maximally <laughs> to ensure that this world doesn't leave. Yeah. No chance to escape. To escape. And of course, when you say this is maximum security prison, it means there are maximum security risks. Yeah. It means that maximum security prison is holding maximum security risks. Therefore, those who guard that prison ought to have maximum security information, information, intelligence, and capacity. So I'm glad you together, collectively, UPDF, police force, and Uganda Prison Service are beginning to realize this philosophy of securing our country. I want to congratulate the graduates who we are going to graduate in a few minutes. Thank you for being good students. Uh, thank you for being good students, and thank you for passing. I, I'm sure all of you have passed. We are not going to graduate with those who have failed. Those, those who have failed either go away or they repeat. And we don't, and we don't encourage repeaters. So, and those of you who are supposed to come here ought to envy these ones and look for opportunity to come here. I have had discussion with the prison authority that we should help try to advance the causes of those non-graduate prison, uh, prison officers who have improved their quality of education. There are people who have joined the prison service after senior four and senior six. For various reasons, they couldn't get degrees, but they have attained degrees. They have attained higher qualifications and degrees when they are already in the prison service. We have told the, the prison authority that those people should all be collected and put to uh, attend, uh, what you call it, what academy? This cadet course. Because you see, when you are training somebody who is already in service, it's cheaper than training a graduate from university. Yeah. Somebody who has done law and you bring, here, bring him here, turn him into a prison officer, the, the, the fellows, their thinking is weird and the, the, they are still raw. Yeah. You tell him stand up, he says, why? <laughs> <laughs> he says much, he says how? <laughs> so to break this person, <laughs> this lady or gentleman, takes you a lot of time. But when the summer is already a prison warder or a corporal or what, they are already prison officers. All you have to do, they are already prison, prison staff. All you have to do is just break them and turn them into officers. So I've said, before you go to the university, use your own raw material. Use your own raw material. Then give these fellows, these fellows opportunity to do exams, 
to do exams. Those who can go to university, let them go. We give them opportunity, they do exams. If they pass their exams, then we can see how to put them into universities while they are within the prison service. If we had resources, we would have schools for those who are not uh, university graduates to improve their academic qualifications because they have already dedicated themselves to the service. Uh, these ones will not run away. Uh, but the university graduates, when they come and look at prison, they are. <laughs> <laughs> But these ones, they are, they are already they are already institutionalized, and they like the institution, and they will stay, and they can render you service. And they are being challenged. And they have they are being challenged, and uh, they have passed the test of time, so improve their quality of academic uh, academic excellence. Even these old, old gentlemen here, stuck what about how we Hey, where we go? I'm going to go. I'm going Even when they are, they, are, they are about to retire, they remain assets like you. I'm not going to leave you free. We can when you retire. Because you have information we have paid for. Yeah. We have trained Dr. Yawa Sheja to PhD. Now, why should we let him go? Hey, Wana, what are you doing? He's an asset at the Staff College. Yeah. The man has studied criminology, he's done this, he's done that, and now he wants to go away to Kunjiri to raise cows. Cows don't need that information. <laughs> yeah. Your cows and bananas don't, <laughs> don't need that information. So, give these gentlemen. Knowledge. And why do you say these uh, senior prison, prison officers? Because they are, most of them are settled. They can now study so, a bit slowly because their capacity to absorb is <laughs> it's now limited by, by other mundane concerns. Uh, but then when they do, they will excel. Give, give them opportunity, and these will be our instructors. These will be our instructors. They will walk on a stick with bent back, but the information in the head will, do, will be there. Once a prison officer, always a prison officer. Eh, it's like uh, these priests. They say, once a priest, you are always a priest forever, even when you run away. They say, ah, this man was a priest. Or they a bad one. <laughs> <laughs> so let's give this... Uh, all the gentlemen who have been through the prison service and they have acquired invaluable information as a result of experience. They may not have university degrees like you, but over time, the many years they have spent here, they have become experts at prison management. Because they have seen both management Good management and mismanagement. Yeah, they have now they can tell the difference between good management and mismanagement. Yeah, they have suffered frustration, they have suffered achievement, they have, they have had achievement, they are, but they have persisted and gone to the, to the top and gone over the cliff, and that's why they are called senior prison officers. I hope you, the junior ones, we look forward to becoming like them. They will be your, they are, huh? they are called role model. They should be your role models. Uh, they should be your role models. All of you should aspire to become like Dr. Johnson Mjavashaija. Johnson Mjavashaija, remember he's called doctor. If you don't have that one, <laughs> being CGP might be a bit <laughs> tricky. Uh, when you get PhD and you're called doctor so and so, and when they are looking for GCGP, you also you come and say, ah, but I'm also around. <laughs> hey, I, I have what your used to have. But when you come and say, who are you? Say, I'm a senior commissioner of prisons. Who are Albertino Opio? And what else? 
Mm -mm, I'm just a pew. <laughs> I can assure you, the prison authority will say, there are men of you. <laughs> but when you say, I'm Dr. Pio, they will say, ah, that one, maybe. You may not get it, but they will say, baby. Yeah, next time. Yeah. But when you don't have it, they will say, ah, ah, where, where? Took on a wingy. To make sure. To make sure. To make sure. So please improve your knowledge. And knowledge should be universal. Knowledge should be universal. The other day I was telling uh, colleagues of mine, politicians, I said, you see, if you are a politician, don't concentrate on being a Catholic only. If you are a leader, don't concentrate on being a Muslim only. Understand the essence of Islam. Understand the essence of Catholicism. Understand what makes Protestants tick. Understand the psychology of these fellows of ours. These, these, <laughs> understand their psychology. Understand the, the philosophy of the Pentecostals. Understand the philosophy of these. Because you are leader for everybody. You are a leader for everybody. You are like a doctor. A doctor treats diarrhea, malaria, uh, syphilis. <laughs> you know, <laughs> mental health. You know? Yeah? Because the doctor is dealing with a human being. Now, leaders, leaders in society are dealing with human beings. You are not dealing with Catholics. You are not dealing with Muslims. You are not dealing. You are dealing with handling human beings. You are not dealing with the Chores, Rogwaras, and Baganda, and Wajankore. No, you are leading human beings who are called Ugandans. So you've got to understand why are these Chores quarreling? Why are these Baganda drumming and jumping up and down and shouting? Why are these Wajankore silent? Why are these Bachiga dancing? Why are the Karabajong stealing each, each other's cows? <laughs> It's when you understand society and its different components that you'll be able to address and solve their problems. You can't solve a problem you don't understand. So you prison, prison officers ought to understand the nature of the prison, of the inmates in your charge. Because the inmates have a plethora of all sorts of problems. Thieves, murderers, liars, forgers, all of them. Their background, their capacity. We have lots of capacity in the prison. We have a lot of capacity. I was telling Dr. Yama here that we should have a wealth of industries. He says he has 79,000 people. Those are 79,000 potential workers. These are 79,000 potential, po potential workers. Why do you keep them here eating for nothing? Yeah. Those who are on remand, that's okay. Those are not yet condemned. But those who are in maximum prison, in Machon Bay, Wurma, Jinja Chitaria, where, where? Those should be made to work. They should be put to productive use. Yeah. I was telling Dr. Yawa Shaija, why do we import shoes? for prison officers and for police officers and for the army. We can produce them. And we should produce them. Why do we import peeps and gadgets? We can produce them and we should produce them. Yeah. Why do we import drums? Drums, we can produce them. In our own uh, prison in industries, once we produce drums, then maybe the the fruits and the trumpets, which are a bit tricky, those we can keep on importing. But the things we can, imp we can make, we should make them, make them here. Okay? We should make them here. If we can make gadgets, if we can make uh, boots, if we can, why should we give our money to foreigners to do what we can do for ourselves? Okay? Why do we hate ourselves? Okay? Why do we hate ourselves? You know, that's the biggest problem with us Africans. Yeah. Africans think they can't. They are, they are capable of going to the moon and coming back, but they don't want to try. That's the problem with Africans. Say, ah, take some 
It can't be done. Why can't it be done? If other people can do it, and those other people were produced by one woman each. So, <laughs> were you produced by two women? <laughs> well, it was one. The Chinese was produced by one, one mother, you were produced by one mother. The Englishman was produced by one, came from one mother, you came from the same. You know. Why? If they can do it, why can't we do it? Why can't we do it? We should try. We should try. One day the late Nyerere was a talking, was addressing Tanzanians. And he told them of uh, an incident where the late Kim Il-sung went to commission a tractor production. And the fellows who showed him the, the tractors, who brought the tractors for production, they found their tractors couldn't go in, go in reverse. The tractors they are manufactured couldn't drive in reverse. Then the Tanzanians left. The lady told the Tanzanians, said, what's wrong with you? At least for them, they produce tractors which go in reverse. Where are you as well? She can't even move. <laughs> yeah. For them, they produce tractors. <laughs> the tractors go in reverse. But you don't have <laughs> even the ones which don't move. Yeah. Because the one who has produced a tractor that goes in reverse can now change or, you know, <laughs> learn how to make it go forward, either by changing the gearbox or, you know, altering the, the gearbox. But you, you have nothing. Why should we have nothing? Dr. Johnson, let's try. Let's try. Let's try to do these things. Let's try. Even if we fall at the, fall at the beginning. Falling is not the problem. The problem is not falling and not getting up. When you fall first time, get up, try again. You fall second time, get up, try again. Then you get to know why you fail. Now when you, you know why you fail, you avoid that slippery ground. And we shall succeed. Uh, finally, I know you have challenges of uh, remuneration. You have challenges of accommodation. You have challenges of uh, other things. Uh, we are doing our level best to address them. We are doing our level best to address them. And um, right now, uh, I'm, the permanent secretary and uh, others have invited a team of people, of uh, officers from the various uh, services within the Ministry of Internal Affairs to address the question of housing. We are trying to build you uh, housing, houses for your officers, about 20,000 for prisons, about 6,000 for immigration, and about 50,000 for the police force. Uh, and I've been pushing the, what do you call them, these fellows who select, uh, the, the, the police is the, the one, the, the one of the laziest, the ones who don't help us. They, they take a lot of time. But what, uh, procurement, eh? they are called procurement. Uh, the procurement. Now, go, <laughs> go over. Tell your procurement people that I will procure them if they don't procure. <laughs> eh? I will procure them if they don't procure. Eh? Because go and tell them that this man is the hardest man. A cow that does not pro provide milk goes to Rufura. <laughs> Either the cow provides milk or it goes to Rufura, my friend. Eh? Well, there is what... Uh, <laughs> What the the Wanyankore call Omurunju Abusha. Omurunju Abusha is beautiful for nothing. This, this person is beautiful, but no children, no milk, no food, nothing. Just there. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, those ones I don't, uh, I don't entertain. Yeah. I, I don't entertain. Prison service, procurement, immigration, uh, police, style up. Stay up, me. I, I have a limited time. I have limited time because my pause in eternity here is just infinitism. I'm just passing through. I'm just a speck in eternity. Yeah. And I don't have time. So I want to do my level best so that when I'm gone, they will say he's the one who did this. I don't want to pass like a shadow. Yeah. Because when it rains, grass sprouts. When it shines, grass dries. But when a shadow passes, 
nothing. No, no, no footprint. Eh? Sun leaves a footprint of drought. Rain leaves a footprint of growth. Shadow leaves nothing. Now, I don't want to pass like a shadow through this department. I want us to do something so that when we are gone, history will come and say, at least they did this. Eh? And Goroba Yari one, Goroba was here. What did he do? Nothing. Eh? He, he did nothing bad. He did nothing good. <laughs> he was just there. He was just there. Ah. Eh? He, was, he was just here. Eh? We give you past a degree that he passed here. Eh? Past a degree, he passed here. Ah. Eh? So we are trying to address your accommodation problems. And I've worked, uh, I'm working with the CGP and his, his staff to address your uh, other needs, then I'm going to engage the government. Resources, so don't say he's going to increase our salaries. No, I'm saying resources allowing we should be able to uh, give you something to, some, some, some wage that will keep you afloat. Because we are cautious that we, you and us go to the same supermarket. We are aware that we go to the same supermarket. Yeah. When I go to the supermarket, I come disappointed. I'm also sure that when you go there, you come out disappointed. So we are, we are, we are conscious of the fact that uh, our pay is not yet up to the desirable standard, and we are addressing it with the uh, government, but we are addressing it we in concomitance with other government services because we are many. Those who draw from the consolidated fund are many, so we have to, to see how to rationally distribute resources. I'm very glad the prison service is doing well. It's the department which I, does not give me headache. Your, prob your problems are manageable. Uh, your problems are manageable. Uh, I, I deal with them and comfortably. Uh, there are other people who are many and who, have, uh, who are complicated. Have to <laughs> you have to deal with and They speak a lot of English. <laughs> yeah, they speak a lot of English. So with those few, few remarks, can I keep them in? <laughs> With those few words, <laughs> you know, you know, Ida Min said I'm a man of few words, but his few words were about three hours. So with those few words, I congratulate the graduates now and the city officers and the prison management. I thank you very much. Thanks for listening. I'm supposed to, to read this proclamation. I, Kahinda Otafire, Minister of Internal Affairs and Chairman of the Uganda Prisons Authority, by the powers and authority vested in, my, in me by the Prisons Act 2006, Section 9 2A and Section 112B. On this seventh day of July, 2023, hereby pass out 20 prison officers who have successfully completed the prison's intermediate course, a command and a staff course. Chief Guest and Honorable Minister, I want now to take this opportunity to invite the Chief Instructor, 
Senior Superintendent of Prisons, Nikome Ben Nyanzi Aimsiwe, to come and take us through the session of presentation of certificates and awards to the graduates. As he comes, I'm sure Professor Eric Awich, Deputy Principal, College of Humanities and Social Sciences, should also prepare to... And then Professor Helen Kalata should also prepare. Over to you. Chief Guest Sir, once again it's an honor to take to the podium to present to you the certificates and awards going out officers who have meritoriously earned them due to the tireless effort coupled with immeasurable dedication they demonstrated towards the course. I am happy to report that all the 20 course participants passed the different assessments and are each awarded with a certificate of merit. And may I now call upon each to come forward and pick his her certificate in the following order. Number one, Senior Superintendent of Prison, Innocent Bravire. Chief Gates, sir, I want to call upon you that uh, you come forward and uh, offer these certificates to the participants. Thank you so much, sir. You bring the bill, I come down. Following number two, Senior Superintendent of Prison, Joseph Mbaji. Number three, Superintendent of Prison, Richard Magongo Mukonge. Number four, Senior Assistant Superintendent of Prison, Ferdinand Baker. Number five, Assistant Superintendent of Prison, Solomon Otema. Number six, Assistant Superintendent of Prison, Peter Simon Ingabat. Number seven, Assistant Superintendent of Prison, Paul Emmanuel Oporot. Number eight, Principal Officer One, Anet Shanik Iboguna. Number nine, Principal Officer One, Lillian Acero.
Number 10. Principal Officer 1, Raymond Obara. Number 11, Principal Officer 1, Peter Nyangabjaki. Number 12, Principal Officer 1, Stephen Onanyang Oruka. Number 13, Principal Officer 1, Joseph Nwamanya. Number 14, Number 14, Principal Officer 1, Christopher Vesje. Followed by number 15, Principal Officer 1, Barbara Mbeiza. Number 16, Principal Officer 1, Christopher Twebaze. Number 17, Principal Officer 1, Amos Tumuhimbise, you have a challenge of your foot. The course senior, you can come and receive his certificate. Number 18, Principal Officer 1, Gina Rubanga Abio. Number 19, Principal Officer 1, Aribat Ayes Gamukama. And lastly, number 20, Principal Officer 1, Caroline Titin. <coughs> Sir, as you finish offering the certificates, while all the 20 officers passed very well all the course assessments, some few of them performed outstandingly in specific aspects of the course. And on this note, we thought it wise to equally recognize their effort through awards of outstanding excellence. So these awards of outstanding excellence go to number one, most disciplined participant. So this one went to one who outstanding who showed outstanding discipline among all the participants with the highest level of cooperation, respect and consideration for others throughout the course. And this one goes to Principal Officer One Barbara Mbeiza. The second award the second award will go to the most innovative. So the most innovative was a very active participant both in class and outside. It was one with outstanding flexibility and multitasking played high significant supportive role to not only his syndicate members but to the whole team. He could manipulate the local environment to provide materials to use as and when required. And he led in designing the publication of their course magazine named 
the pursuit. And this one goes to Principal Officer 1, Albert Ayesigamukama. So the third award is best in leadership. This participant demonstrated result-oriented command and leadership, was a very good time manager, demonstrated very positive attitude towards the course with consistent sense of self-drive, was kind and supportive to the team members, and is one with inspirational character guiding the team to positive conclusions. And so this one goes to Senior Superintendent of Prison, Joseph Mpaji. The fourth award, sir, is Commandant's Award. This one is awarded to a participant who demonstrated excellent scholarly and research skills in writing the commandant's service paper. And this one goes to Assistant Superintendent of Prisons, Peter Simon Ingabat. So the fifth and last award goes to Best Overall. This one demonstrated supportive leadership with humility and commendable consideration for colleagues. He showed care for each one to ensure no one is left behind. Was a very good time manager, very positive attitude towards the course and assignments. He was timely and proactive in handling of course assignments was highly flexible and organized. He demonstrated the highest level of resilience, generally a course magnet that over time attracted fellow participants to the course amidst challenging circumstances. And so this one goes to Senior Superintendent of Prison, Innocent Bravire. So we come to the end of presentation of certificates and awards to the participants. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, uh, Chief Instructor.
At this moment, we are going to sing the anthems and thereafter take a group photo with the chief guest. Thank you. Band? Chief Guest, we now request that you permit us to have a group photo with the participants, the Commissioner General, and the partnering institutions. The participants today have received two, three certificates, apart from the Intermediate Command course, but they have received the certificate from Uganda Management Institute. And we have Dr. Sylvester Kugonza here, the Dean of School of Civil Service and Public Admin, to represent the Director General. And we also have Professor Erika Wichi, the Deputy Principal, College of Humanities and Social Sciences. So after the Chief Guest, the Honorable Minister, has finished taking photographs with the participants. A group of other officers are also going to take the photographs. I wish also to inform you, ladies and gentlemen, that we have prepared lunch and it's enough. Kindly don't leave without. Kindly don't leave without testing this very marvelous, well-prepared lunch for you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we shall have the other tent on my right will be for the chief guest and other guests who, uh, who were seated in this tent. And the rest of us, we have also a tent behind, the, behind there and they are adequate seats. So kindly, you're going to receive the ushers and the ushers will be taking you uh, to the places where we are going to have our lunch from. The chief guest, the honorable minister is taking photographs with the participants he has
passed out today and this is indeed a phenomenal day in our history as Uganda Prison Service. The leaders of academic institutions had also requested to have photograph Thank you, the participants are having their moment with the chief guest, with the commissioner general, and the rest of the invited guests. Band, as we take the photographs, please put up a presentation. Thank you.
so much, Brass Band, for that wonderful presentation. Just for purposes of uh, all of us, the guests who are here, the participants have received three in one, three certificates in one. They have received the certificate of intermediate command and staff course, but also they have received a certificate from Uganda Management Institute Present, represented by none other than Dr. Sylvester Kugonda, the Dean of School of Civil Service and Public Administration, Public Administration and Governance, and the certificate from Uganda Management Institute is the Certificate in Institutional Management and Leadership. Congratulations, colleagues. Thank you, Dr. for give, awarding this certificate. We have also a certificate from Makere University. That's a certificate in conflict, in peace and conflict studies. And uh, today we had Professor Eric Awich, the deputy principal of the College of Humanities and Social Sciences. Also with Professor Helen Nkaraba, the director of Rotary Peace Center and the convener. So we have had three certificates in one. Thank you, Makere University, and thank you, Uganda Management Institute. We are yet to have, we are about to have our lunch, and uh, the Commissioner General is, has, is just seeing off the Honorable Minister, the Chief Guest, and then Thereafter, we shall be having our lunch. We thank you for being here. We thank you for honoring the invitation. We see a big force from the sister forces, the Uganda Police Force, and the Uganda People's Defense Forces. I think I request the band to play as we receive, shortly we shall be receiving ushers who will be guiding us to the serving point where we shall have our lunch from. Thank you so much, and thank you for being here.